Thanks for joining us today on Game Day Sports Radio. We want to welcome you to the premiere of the Crazy 8 Challenge. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to Game Day Sports Radio so you can stay up to date on all the programming, including notifications about our weekly broadcast of the Crazy 8 Challenge. Each week, these college football experts, and maybe not so, some so not so expert, will attempt to pick the winners of 10 games straight up with only one goal. That goal, to beat the world's most recognized leader in decision-making for over 73 years. That leader is the Magic 8-Ball. Beginning October 1st, though, viewers will be, have the opportunity to submit their picks each week. And if you beat the 8-Ball, you will be entered into a drawing to join our panel as the week's guest picker with the opportunity to earn gift certificates and other prizes. Now, let me introduce you to our panel. I'm your host, GC, a member of Game Day Sports Radio and the Speed Network. Joining Game Day Sports Radio from deep in the heart of Texas, Steve Mock. Steve has covered college football all the way back to the days of the Southwest Conference. For those of you who can even remember what that was. Steve, how are you doing today? Doing great. Happy to be here, GC. Glad to you could join us. Uh, William Latch, while the Latch family name is normally associated on the hardwood, don't let that fool you. William is the voice of the Spain Park football, basketball, and volleyball teams that has been the driving force behind the Speed Network, powered by Game Day Sports Radio. And finally, last but not least, the coach, Boji Wood, with over 30 years of experience in college football, playing, coaching, and administrating. How are you doing, Boji? I'm doing great. Ready to get this on. I, I'm prepared tonight. That's good. I'm glad. So it's an interesting uh, week one that we came out. And Matt, you know, everybody says that between week one and week two is when teams make their biggest, uh, the biggest improvements and their biggest strides. So then I think one of the teams I think that made the biggest strides last year was Tennessee under Josh Heupel. And that's our first matchup. And it's going to be Tennessee at Pittsburgh a game that will be broadcast at 2.30 on ABC. And I'm going to go ahead and pick first here on this one because my nephew, Tyler, just went to Tennessee, but I don't think he's going to be happy in one of his first college football games experience because I think Pitt at home takes down Tennessee. Steve, what do you think? Well, I got to tell you, down here in Texas, we are so thrilled that Peyton Manning let one of his relatives escape the Southeast Conference, and Arch is going to be joining the Burnt Orange next year down in Austin. So just as a show of appreciation, we have to do all things Manning. We're going to stick with uh, the fighting Peyton Mannings here. I'm taking Tennessee. Coach? Well, Keaton Slovis, he gets his chance uh, to run a, the pit offense after transferring from Southern Cal. I look for Hendon Hooker, though, to have a big day. Interesting fact, this is the first time that any SEC team has played in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, I, I, found, uh, I found that astounding uh, after all these years that no SEC team has ever gone and played at Pitt before. But I'm going to be on the bandwagon with Steve here. I'm going with the Vols. And, and William, what do you think? I'm with you guys. I, I think Tennessee will get the job done. Um, I think it's going to be tough to play on the road. And I, I think it's going to be a great game to kind of see where Tennessee's at. I know people are, are pretty high on Tennessee this year, and I think it'll be a great a great matchup. But I got Tennessee on the road by a very small margin, maybe, maybe 10 points or less. Well, and let's see what the master thinks. The Magic 8-Ball. Well, it looks like I'm on the outside looking in with all four of you picking Tennessee, and I'm the only one with Pitt. Magic 8-Ball is going to go with uh, Rocky Top Tennessee. Hmm. All right. Our next matchup uh, brings number 25, Houston, at Texas Tech, 3 o'clock game on Fox Sports 1. Houston barely escapes last week uh, against a, a good, good, good mid-major team. And uh, – I think they're going to have their hands full this week. But, Will, what's your pick? That's tough. I I like Texas Tech at home. I just – they're always sneaky good when they play at home. They always have some miracles happen. So, I'm going Texas Tech. Coach? 
Well, the Cougars needed three overtimes to get by UT San Antonio. Tech easily handled Murray State 63-10, to as they should have. Listen, the Red Raiders in Lubbock, you know, it's, it's kind of magical. So uh, I'm going with the Red Raiders. Steve? When in Lubbock, you have to watch out for the flying tortillas. I'm going to tell you, please don't make me spend more than three, three and a half hours in either one of these two places. But I'm going to go with the upset. I like the Cougars here. I'm taking Houston. You know, uh, UT San Antonio is not somebody that to be laughed at. I mean, they have gained uh, momentum over the last couple of years and proved their program to be contended with. And, you know, so I'm not sure just looking at that and seeing that Houston struggle with them last week is a true indicator uh, that Houston struggled. But that being said, I do like Texas Tech at home. They seem to always figure out a way to pull it out. They do have a pretty good fan base that likes to seem to rally them. So I'm going to go with Texas Tech. And now we're going to shake the eight ball. Eight ball chooses Texas Tech. So. Next matchup, Virginia at Illinois, 3 p.m. on ESPNU. Brett Bielema should have had plenty of time to hit the buffet. <laughs> Steve, what do you think? I don't want to get in between Brett and the buffet. I'm going with the hmm. fight in the line eye. Will? Sam, I got Illinois. Uh, it's hard to pick against Illinois right now. Virginia is so up and down year after year, and I just I'm not I don't think they've got it what it takes this year. So I'm going with Illinois. Coach. Good win versus Richmond for Tony Elliott last week in his first game with the Cavaliers. Uh the Illini lost by three to Indiana, which I think at the end of the year we're gonna look back and say this Indiana team was was pretty good because the first week out of the box, Illinois handled Wyoming. Easily. Uh, I'm going with the Illini. I'm going with the with the former big hog, Brett Bielema. Well, that's unanimous. Everybody, including the eight ball, is choosing Illinois. Early, early season rivalry game. Iowa State at Iowa, 3 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. Coach, what, who do you like? I'm really on the fence here. Uh, Iowa has won the last six, but an Iowa State win, it wouldn't surprise me. However, they're playing in Kinnick Stadium, home of the Hawkeyes, and my neighbor Rod is an Iowa alum. So I'm going to keep harmony uh, between our houses, and I'm going with the Hawkeyes. You know, for me, uh, I'm going to go with the Hawkeyes as well, even though I think they struggled a little bit last week. I think there's some questions at quarterback play. Um but I think that, you know, Kirk Friends always seems to figure out a way to win the one that everybody thinks that he's not going to. And with them being um, at home, uh, I think they pull it out. Uh, William? I agree with that statement. They Watching Iowa last week, I was, I was like, wow. But I agree. I think they bounce back this week. I think they get the job done. And last but not least, Steve? I may be putting too much influence on last week's less than stellar performance where Iowa might still be playing against no one on the field and they still haven't scored two mm -hmm. safeties and a field goal. So just like Ferenc seems to surprise oftentimes when you're not expecting him to win, he's also known a time or two to do that when he's not supposed to lose and seeing as how I was favored in this one, give me Cyclone. Well, Steve, the eight ball agrees with you. So we'll see. Are you the master? <laughs> Is that a good thing? Yeah. That we'll see. Next one that's up, I think uh, it probably still shocks a lot of people to continually talk about this, but you got to admit, Stoops has done an amazing job at Kentucky uh, to keep them in the conversation the last couple of years. And going up against a resurging Florida team uh, that seemed to, uh, to put some numbers up last week, and I think, uh, you know, shocked, somewhat shocked some fans by beating Utah. Uh, so we got number 12, Kentucky at, or I mean, uh, number 20, Kentucky at number 12, Florida, 6 PM ESPN game. I'm going to go with Florida at home. As much as I like what Kentucky's done up there. I think that a lot of times when they get into those, you know, the tough environments on the road, 
away from the home. Uh, they just seem to not be able to put it all together and make one or two mistakes. So I'm going to go with Florida uh, to get, get up to 2-0, and and, and uh, Kentucky goes home, uh, I guess, thinking about basketball season. Steve? The kids these days pronounce it Flo Rida, just like the singer and playing at home. And now that the mighty Mullen is not there anymore, give me the Gators to move to 2-0. Coach? These two teams are 2-2 two and two over the last four contests. Now, Anthony Richardson, he's the most talented guy on the field. If the Gators aren't full of themselves after this win versus a, a good Utah team, they win easily. But if the Wildcats can force a couple of turnovers, then they will have back-to-back -back wins against the Gators for the first time since 1976 and 77, 45 years. They've only beaten them three times in the last 45 years. Well, I got Florida in this one. I, I think they, they proved themselves last week against a tough, tough opponent with Utah, uh, you know, squeezing by, but playing in the swamp against a, a SEC opponent. I, I just, I got Florida in this one. Well, the eight ball believes that the blue grass <laughs> Miracle might be still in play and believes in what Stoops has done up there and believes that they can go down to the swamp and lead to victory. Uh, Florida's maybe still too, a little too young with a new coach. So eight ball says that Kentucky gets it done. So what you're telling me is, is that if Kentucky wins, a glass ball of water was smarter than the four of us. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's there's some magic in there, man. People have relied on people have relied on the eight ball to make life altering decisions for over 70 years, marriages, uh, you know, job decisions, the decisions to move. They've all been relied on the eight ball. I'm reading up on it. There's people that believe in the magic of it. There's some truth to it. So we'll see, you know, next we've got Boston college at Virginia tech 7 PM on the ACC network. Um, Virginia Tech, always a tough place to play, especially when they uh, come out to uh, enter Sandman to get Metallica going. But it seems like the last couple of years that uh, that's all they've had a couple of times. And so they've been hit or miss. So we're going to start with you on this one, though, Will. You know, I, I don't really have a certain way or another, but one of my buddies that I went to high school with played football at Boston College, and that is enough reason for me to pick them on the road. There you go. Coach. And this probably is the most even matchup that we have this week. Both teams 0-1. Uh, Both lost leads in the fourth quarter last week. Uh, they had a chance to win the game. Virginia Tech, though, had five turnovers. I think that was the difference versus Old Dominion. I like Virginia Tech at home. Steve. I think they'll be doing the hokey pokey in Blacksburg. Give me Va Tech. Yeah, I'm going to take back Tech as well. I think it's just too much home game uh, for BC to overcome. And the eight ball is going to go with Virginia Tech. Mm. See, maybe, maybe, maybe you, maybe you just got a big old glass ball of water up up there, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> so, another interesting matchup coming up. And Steve, I know you're going to be up late to watch this one. You've got number nine, Baylor, at number 21, BYU, 9, 15 p.m. Eastern – or 9 p.m. Central kickoff. And, uh, you know, with the way those two teams like to sling it, that game will probably go until about 2 in the morning. But Baylor on the road, you know, BYU making the move uh, to a different conference here in the next couple of years with something to prove. Uh, Steve, what, who do you like? Well, I like what Dave Aranda's got going on down in Waco – he may not have been cut out to be a Southeast Conference coach, but he's fit in very nicely with the Baylor Bears. I think this one is going to come down to the wire, but I look for Baylor to pull it out. Will? I got Baylor, too. You know, I, Blake Shapin, their quarterback last week, uh, was 85% on completion percentage. I, I think he played really well. Obviously, they played Albany that, you know, that competition is not Big 12, but uh, I got I got Baylor. I'm going to go with Baylor as well. I think even though they got to travel a long distance and they're not probably used to those uh, staying out that late, 
Uh, I just think they got too much, too much offense. And usually seems like these types of games, BYU has to kind of try to grind it out at the end. And I just don't think they'll have enough to do. So I'm going with Baylor. Coach. It's not going to be easy, but I look for the number nine bears to handle the Cougars in Provo. So the Baptists are going to top the Mormons in, in this one. Well, there must be something out there that we don't know because the eight ball says BYU is going to take it at home. So we'll see. We'll see. This will be, I think, the probably our first true test to see if, if the eight ball is really the master. Mm-hmm. Next, you've got Oregon State at Fresno State, an even later game for you, Steve, 9.30 p.m. Um, you know, so, uh, Coach, where do you want to go with this one? This should be an entertaining game. Uh, Oregon State, they bested Boise State last week, and Fresno State had no trouble down in Cal Poly, took care of their business early like they should have. You know, beavers are really cute, but I'm a dog person, so I'm going Fresno State at home in the upset. Uh, We lost uh, Will there, but we got him back. All right. I'm going to go with Fresno State as well. I just have never really been sold on Oregon State. Uh, you know, they seem every couple of years to have something uh, something going, but they just don't seem to be able to put a couple of years together. And I think Fresno State uh, has some momentum going, so I'm going to go with Fresno State. Uh, William? Uh, I got I got Fresno State in this one. Uh, I don't think I have any rhyme or reason behind it. I'm just going with Fresno State. All right. This next one's just uh, typically doesn't meet the criteria. Typically, the criteria for these straight up pick em games, we try to find spreads that are five points or less. But one thing, GC, I didn't get my pick in there. I know we had a. Oh, I'm sorry. Pick. I missed you with William. Uh, that's right. We'll go. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. So, Fresno and Oregon State, I believe, is kind of a pick em. It's a toss up. On Sunday in the NFL, Fresno State alums, Devontae Adams and Derek Carr, will be reunited. I think the mojo carries over. Give me the Bulldogs. All right. And the eight ball likes the Bulldogs as well. So, all right. This next game normally doesn't meet – it doesn't normally meet the criteria we try to find for uh, our our, our selections. We try to find games five points or less to try to – since head-to-head matchups. But with uh, the majority of us being in Alabama and Steve – with his longtime coverage of the Texas Longhorns and the Southwest Conference and the Big 12, decided to throw this one on just for um, just for some rivalry purposes and the fact that you know Steve's son just enrolled as a freshman at Texas A&M, so he's getting it from all sides now. So we got Alabama versus Texas. So Steve, because of that, we're going to go ahead and let you start off with this one. All right. I was shocked to learn that this is the first meeting, regular season meeting between these two schools in 100 years. Shows that the people down in Austin know what they're doing scheduling wise. As much as I'd like to be a homer and go with the beloved Longhorns, I am definitely not. uh, I am a realist. So give me the roll tide roll Alabama's to win quite easily on Saturday. I'm going to go with you, Steve. I'm going to go Alabama at Texas. However, it is unusual. Alabama does not normally play 11 a.m. early games like the Big 12 and the, uh, the Big 10 like to play. Uh, they may start off a little slow, but, and I think Sarkeesian, obviously, the motivating factor to try to uh, to, to, to beat uh, uh, Saban, but I just think – Alabama is going to be too much for a rookie quarterback and Quinn yours and Alabama takes it coach. This is very interesting is that Alabama as again, as Steve said, this first regular season meeting between the two teams, they've all been in bowl games and they've all been in big bowl games. We remember Alabama beating Texas in the Rose Bowl for the national championship 11, 12 years ago, but Bama is one seven and one all time against Texas. But after tomorrow, it'll be two seven and one. I like Alabama. Boji, you're not allowed to uh, mention that game in the Rose Bowl with Texas fans. They're still upset that we knocked the quarterback out. They still think they would have had it. <laughs> and they probably are right. They had the lead. They were driving. So, yeah, I, I, 
I can understand their frustration. So, uh, William? Well, I do. Uh, William's a Closet Auburn fan for some people. I've seen some pictures of him with his baby on his new, 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 newborn uh, baby girl in some Auburn yeah. gear. So, we are, we are fighting for her to be an Auburn fan in this house, but I do like to sleep in my bed at night. So, I'm going to let my wife be the guest picker on this one, and she's going to tell you which way we are going in the latch house. Hey, guys. Horns down, roll tight. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The little, uh, little right. baby Mosley making her first TV network appearance. <laughs> so, all right. And our last matchup uh, for the week, Duke versus Northwestern. Northwestern uh, was fortunate to uh, beat Nebraska off a uh, – Questionable onside kick in week one in Ireland. Uh, back in the States, though, now two weeks later. So Duke versus Northwestern. Uh, Steve, which way are you going to go on this one? Well, I'll take either one in the SAT Bowl uh, if we're counting those scores. However, on the football field, give me the fight in Pat Fitzgerald's. I think it will be close, but I'll take Northwestern in the end. Will? Well, GC, you might not know this about me, but I am a huge Tar Heel fan. So I, I wouldn't know that. I'm never big dude. So I got Northwestern in this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with Northwestern as well. I'll tell you the first college football game I ever attended uh, when I was a youngster was at Northwestern against Illinois. And Illinois actually won at Northwestern and ripped down the goalpost, carried them to the top of the stadium, tossed them over, almost hit a bus, and then another group carried them out to uh, and, and put them in Lake Michigan. So, uh, you know, when I lived up there, I mean, uh, Northwestern wasn't much to be uh, thought of. That was a, almost another bye week, but I like Pat Fitzgerald, and I think Northwestern gets it done this week. Yeah, and as you mentioned now, the Northwestern, you mentioned the questionable onside kick call. It wasn't controversial as far as who got it, but it was just an unbelievable call by Scott Frost. I, you know – I don't like to bash other coaches because I know I've made decisions before that that people question, but I had my reasons for doing it. He's kind of explained his reasons. You know, I, I just can't believe he tried that. But anyway, long story short, you know, Duke got a, a good win over over Temple. Uh, I think playing on the road is is always more difficult than playing at home. And in the battle of the ACTs, I'm taking the Wildcats, Northwestern. So, um, eight ball agrees with you. And, uh, the eight ball was a little lagging on his previous pick and the eight ball did go with Alabama. I uh, thought that was probably understood. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, just so everybody knows, uh, we got excited when we saw the, 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 the baby, uh, jumping up to make her first pick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the eight ball got a little confused on that one. So the eight ball lag, but we got the eight ball with Alabama and the eight ball with Northwestern. So, all right, guys. Well, enjoy your Saturday watching some college football, and um, we'll keep a, we're going to keep a weekly tally of this. Not only will we get some bragging rights for the week, uh, but also we're going to keep a, a season tally. And like I said, as uh, we get this out, and uh, we're going to give our viewers an opportunity to participate and see if they can uh, master the challenge of and be the master of the crazy eight ball challenge. All right, guys. Until next week. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good evening.